Hey guys, Mike here at Steel Green. Now we're gonna discuss some engine and hydraulic maintenance. So let's take the pad off this thing. Okay guys, now we're gonna go check out the hydraulic and engine oil systems on the machine and kind of discuss those. So first thing you see behind the pad is gonna be your hydraulic reservoir. And as you can see, we even call out the two uh, change intervals for your hydraulic and your engine oil on there, right, right there. The full mark and the add mark on the label, as long as you keep your oil level in between these two, you're good to go. You just don't wanna you know, get down here too low. On your hydraulic system, you see that it's 500 hours is the change interval and the engine is every 100 hours. Um, it doesn't give you a capacity here for the hydraulic oil, but you're probably gonna be right in the range of three quarts to three and a half, what you'll get out of the system and have to put back in. The engine, however, we do list out there 1.75, and that's if you're changing the oil filter as well. I always tend to put in a quart and a half and then add and check from there on the stick because sometimes the oil cooler that's on the engine on the left side will hold some oil and you may not need that full 1.75 quart during the change. In regards to the hydraulic, when you're going to change that, right here next to the filter, there's just one filter, there's two lines that come off and feed each pump. You just remove the line from the left pump and remove the line here from the, the right pump as well. And you can drain those down into a pan on the floorboard. Just use a funnel. Uh, the engine drain hose is located right here in between. It's plenty long. You just simply pull it out, take it under, and you can drain that engine oil right into a pan here on the floor. Makes it nice and easy for you. Just put it back in there like that. Okay, so one of the easiest things to monitor is going to be your engine oil level. And you want to keep track of this on a daily, on a daily rate because if your engine runs low on oil at any time, it's going to be a costly repair. So just do yourself a favor and get in the habit of checking this every day. It's on the right side of the machine is where we're currently at. You just reach down beside the liquid tank, pull your dipstick out wipe it off, put it back in, then take it back out to get a reading. And of course you'd want to make sure the engine had been sitting and has not been at, uh, been running here recently. So if you look at this stick here, there's going to be hash marks and then on the back side you have two dots. As long as you have it in between the two dots, that's where you want it to be. You want to make sure it's never below the hash marks or below the two dots, and then you'll be good to go. So the air filter is going to be located directly in, on top of the engine towards the front here in between your gas tank and hopper. Uh, this machine is actually equipped with the foam marker mount. we will have a foam marker on top of here uh, very shortly. But even with this bracket in place, it's still no issue at all. You just go right underneath the bracket, you release your two clips, that are on the cover, take your cover off, and then you can remove that air filter. Uh, this is a nice big Donaldson air cleaner, so they can really take a lot of dirt before they get too clogged, but you still wanna make sure that you're checking this thing uh, every week at least, especially with the environment these things are running in. So you would just put your new filter back in there nice and tight, replace the cap, and set the two clips on it. One other thing to cover real quick as far as debris and dust in the air in these machines, it would be a good thing for you to regularly be blowing the engine off, just compressed air or maybe a, a blower of some sort. The uh, screen on top of the motor, you know, you just wanna make sure you get any of that dust in particular out of there, as well as the oil cooler on the left side of the motor keeping those fins clean so it can breathe and do its job. Same with the engine, keeping itself nice and cool. I would avoid water contact with the engine as much as possible and stick towards the keeping it dry and getting it blown out method of maintenance. Okay guys, next thing we're gonna talk about is gonna be the electrical system on the machine and the fuse locations. So starting on the underside of the dash, you'll have your main harness that comes off your key switch here and there's a fuse that's right outside of that. 
the caps just pull off and it's going to be a 30 amp fuse that's in there. Some cases there may be a fuse on this wire uh, down lower near the starter solenoid on the lower right hand side of the unit. It just depends on your machine. Um, attachments. So this machine has a foam marker attachment. So on the second switch on the dash, you're going to have another fuse. It looks just like the, the other one that's for the main system. It uh, is going to be a 30 amp fuse as well. They do come in different shades of green. Don't, don't mind that. 30 amp fuse of any kind will definitely work for you. Hey guys, next topic we're going to be discussing is going to be the grease circuits on the machine, where they're at, and how often you should be greasing them. First thing I'm going to talk about is going to be this idler arm assembly. So this is the tensioner arm assembly for the drive belt, which is going to be located underneath the machine, underneath the engine deck. It's actually um, under there riding in a fashion like this. So you have the two bushings here uh, on my right hand are oil impregnated bronze bushings. So they already do a pretty good job of staying lubricated themselves. And you have one grease point right here. This is going to be a very small amount of grease it will take. I'd say monthly if you hit that greaser, it'll be just fine. The tensioner pulley on this arm is going to be an actual uh, sealed non-serviceable bear non-serviceable bearing. So you don't have to worry about greasing that. And uh, one last feature I wanted to discuss. If you do need to remove your belt or just you want to take it off and check tension and check your pulleys, all you need is a 3 8 uh, drive ratchet and you just stick it right here in the square hole. You can pull the tension off just like you would on a, a car idler assembly. All right, the next location we're going to talk about for greasing is going to be on the front of the machine. On both sides of the machine, you're going to have two, so that's four more grease circuits. That'll make a total of five on the unit. Right here on your caster tower, up here above the caster, there's the one grease point. It's kind of hidden underneath the flange that supports this caster tube. And then also down here on the wheel. Now the, the wheel has a pretty large cavity for grease in there, so this one may take quite a bit. The one up in the frame, really you should be pretty good on. Um, I'd say monthly, if you're hitting these, you, you'd be all right. Just depends on level of use. You may want to go to bi-weekly if you're somebody that's going to have this machine in the field a lot because these front wheels do take a fair amount of abuse. Um, and if you ever do replace the bearings in this tower, I would always make sure you pack them with grease as well before and then grease it until you see grease come out into the cavity up top of here where the castle nut is on top and then install your grease cap. All right, guys, next thing we're going to talk about is going to be hopper maintenance for the granular system on the machine. So I'm going to open up the door so you guys can see the pattern adjustment diffuser piece on the machine. So it's going to look like a, a row of black plastic teeth. And you're going to want to make sure and keep those free of buildup and, and nice and clean, as well as the, the slide and everything on the bottom of your hopper as well. That way it doesn't uh, affect your pattern. If that has buildup on it, you're not going to be able to use it uh, in adjusting your pattern. Say it's heavy to the right and you're, you're trying to even that out. Uh, moving a little forward from the hopper door there, you will see we have a felt washer here that rides on top of our hopper bushing. The hopper bushing is snapped in. You want to make sure that is fully snapped in in place and it's not wore out. It's nice and tight around the hopper shaft and that your felt washer is snug down on top just to keep stuff out of it from chewing it up and increasing the life. Uh, just above there in the shaft you'll have this agitator wire. It just snaps through the hole in the shaft and it just spins around with the shaft and it's going to be responsible for breaking up clumps of material and things just to keep that stuff free flowing in the hopper. Uh, one other key thing to keep in mind is going to be lubrication of your cables. You've got three cables on the machine, the door, the pattern, and the side deflector. You know, make sure and, and at least lubricate those weekly, if not daily, depending on usage with a good um, dry PTFE lubricant. I've heard good things about Schaefer oil, fluid film. Well, lots of customers uh, tend to like those. Okay, next I'd like to discuss the tank fittings on the bottom of the tanks. There's going to be two fittings on every tank. The forward one is going to be where your hose actually hooks up for the suction line to the tank, and the rearward fitting is just going to be an extra tank fitting that is plugged. That way you can remove that plug, drain your tank, clean it out without having to mess with cutting the hose 
off, removing it from the bar, messing with clamps, and all that extra time. Okay, next thing we're going to talk about is going to be the nozzle body assemblies on the boom of the machine. You're either going to have four or five of these across it, just depending on the size of the machine, and they are going to have all the same maintenanceable components to them. On the back of the nozzle body, you will have a cap that has a 10 psi spring and a rubber diaphragm. You just want to make sure this diaphragm is nice and smooth, it's not weathered or, or cracked or split. There's no holes in it. So we'll just screw that back on. What that does, it's a 10 psi check valve for the spray system. Moving down to the actual nozzle itself, it's just a quarter turn, comes off. Your screen, sometimes these screens may not want to fall out. They might be stuck in there. You can just kind of tap on it, or if you have a toothpick or something, just kind of gently pull it out. Um, you want to make sure these screens are nice and clean. They have a check ball inside, so if this star washer is missing, then you may have some nozzle dripping issues when you turn the pump off because the check valve is no longer uh, working. The cap itself holds the nozzle, and it has these alignment flats on the nozzle so it holds all of these nozzles so that they don't intersect and hit each other as they're spraying. They're all kind of overlapping right next to each, each other. There's a rubber gasket in here. Easiest way really to get it out, you just simply sit it down, push the nozzle down, and get your gasket out. And same thing with putting the nozzle back together. If you just simply line the flats up with the flats of the nozzle, then we can just push it through place our gasket. Slide the screen in the nozzle body. Line it up. It's a quarter turn. Now one other piece that may be involved here is that there's an extension. All this piece here is the same quarter turn just like this. It's just kicking these nozzles out a little bit due to it may be clearance or just spacing from the ground that sort of thing. So that's not uncommon to see a, a kick out extension there. Hey guys, thanks for watching us here and checking out our videos. If you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to us via email at parts at steelgreenmfg.com or go to our website, which is steelgreenmfg.com for other ways to contact us.